Hello and welcome back to my channel. As always, welcome. How are you guys? Ha, <sighs> today's going to be a rough video for me because you know, I just really want to talk about I don't know. It's a lot and honestly, I've got a lot weighing on my mind, so I figured if I was going to talk, I might as well talk to my camera. This video will probably never get posted. No one will probably ever see it, but who cares, right? So, recently, I've been really, 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 really down. And I'm, I'm one of those people, I'm really good at hiding it. Um, it's really hard for me to express my feelings like people want me to in fact i think my boyfriend's the exact same way he doesn't think i know this but you know it's cool um anyways so it's been really hard recently and i know everybody's gonna be like huh, life isn't that difficult i mean you seem happy you post happy like but honestly it's not easy and I know everybody has their struggles, so I'm not saying my problems are more significant than others. Everyone's problems are different on the scale of significancy. But in my scale of significancy, my problems are up here. And everything else is down here. Because if my problems, like my anxiety, my depression, my anger, my emotion, if my issues are not like at a certain point where I can handle them then I can't handle anything else so that being said let's start with I just I don't know how many I this is a I don't want to say I have depression because I haven't been diagnosed with depression but from time to time 95% of the time, I am extremely sad or not myself. Um, I'm really good, again, I'm really good at hiding it. Or I, a lot of times I sleep problems away so I don't even notice them. But, again, probably not the best thing to do when you're in my position. So... I don't want to say I have depression. In fact, I don't personally think I have depression. But then again, I also don't think I'm psychotic. And, you know, there's there's this... Um, there's just a lot. So, recently, last week, I was in a state of I had a complete breakdown in my bedroom by myself and you know at some point in your life and I'm not sure how many people go through these but when you have that breakdown and at this point this is like when you're at your most vulnerable point and you're on your knees and you're praying and you're begging God to help you yeah, that was my moment. And after I had sat there and prayed and cried, I felt a whole lot better, but I still felt bad. And so I came across this song not too long ago. It was somewhere at the beginning of the year, the end of last year, called Trainwreck. And that song was literally explaining exactly how I feel and what I wanted without me having to say it and well well no yeah um it's just one of those things I have I'm one of those people I have I if you really want me to express myself then you need to really listen to the music that I listen to like when I'm in a happy-go-lucky mood, I'm listening to all of the hype, top, super happy vibes of the 80s and the 50s and the 60s. 
and I'm listening to musicals and I'm just like dancing and singing and when I'm like in a really bad angry kind of mood I'm listening to this thug yeah they're this thug shooter shooter gang gang you know that kind of music when I'm angry and when I'm sad I listen to like some of James Arthur's music I really like Louis Capaldi he's really growing on me um and oh my gosh what's the other guy's name The guy who sings Let Me Down Slowly. Oh my gosh. Okay, anyways. I listened to it. That guy, I cannot think of his name. It makes me really upset. And I listened to James Bay. And I listened to some of um, other songs that are really sad. And I'm just like, I really want to be in my feelings. And express them in a way that I can understand. Even if other people can't. So when people think I'm not expressing my feelings, I actually really am. I'm just not expressing them in a way like, hey babe, guess what? I had a psychotic breakdown today. I'm not doing that. It's more like a, I like this song recently. It really spoke to me. So it just, um, yeah, that's that. Another really big issue I've been having recently, I've been having a lot of self-doubts in my life, in my relationships, and just like my everyday thought process and it's so frustrating to constantly have these constant reminders of you're not good enough or you're not doing this or you're not doing that or you can't do this, you can't do that, you're broke, he's cheating on you. I mean, it's just a whole mess. And I'm not saying my boyfriend is cheating on me before you guys jump onto conclusions. No, that's just a thought process. Like, that's just my first thought. Like, if it's like one of those automatic jumps. You know those memes you see about females? And them jumping to conclusions. Yeah, that's all it is. And it's not even just jumping to conclusions about him. It's jumping to conclusions about myself. It's jumping to conclusions about other people. It's jumping to conclusions about just things in general. So, honestly, I don't even think I've figured out a coping, mechan a coping method for any of this. Like, on one, on one hand, I know... All of these are just thoughts and they're completely psychotic and not, well, not even psychotic, but they're completely like not even right. But on the other hand, it's like, I've heard it so often and I've said it to myself so often that it's really hard for me not to believe. So, for example, um... About a year ago two years ago I dated this guy um, it was not the boyfriend before my current boyfriend but the boyfriend before him my very like the guy I thought I was gonna spend my entire life with he's he was a pain in my butt um, I was going through a point where I had been really stuck to myself and I mean, I've obviously I've done this in Pat in my in my current relationship, and and I'm pretty sure I did this in my relationship before before Matt. Like, but in this in that particular relationship, I was oh my phone's gonna die. I was at a point where I had a some kind of breakdown every week. Um, excuse me, while I plug in my phone. Oh my god. So I wasn't, and it wasn't on purpose, but I spent a lot of time in the counselor's office. My entire high school, my entire sophomore year, my counselor was my best friend. Honestly, she helped me a lot get through my problems, but at the end of the day, she still couldn't give me all the help that I wanted. So 
at this point I was just having breakdown after breakdown after breakdown even my best friends they couldn't even they didn't know what to do they did the same thing they always did they hugged me they had me cry it out but it got to a point where I didn't even know why I was crying anymore like I was just that done so eventually it got to the point where I moved I came to my new high school the one I graduated from and I met my best friend she also she came like the day after I did so I mean we were both late to school like she's I started like a day later than everybody else and she started the next day after I did so I had met my best friend and we hit it off just like that we were both crazy and demented as each other like and it felt great to finally find someone who understood and I'm sure my other my other best friend and I love her dearly and I really wish I could see her see her more I'm pretty sure she understood too but just having that person to click and just moving from my old best friend it really took a toll on me because she helped me through my entire relationship but at the ending of that particular relationship, when I, I was here, he was there. He basically got to the point where he was just nothing but mentally and emotionally abusive. He couldn't physically abuse me anymore, which was a blessing. So there were no more, there were no more bruises. There were no more, there was no more being choked, any of that. It was just now it was like. It was now just emotional and physical abuse. You'd never be good enough. You'll never be happy. No one's going to like you like I do. No one's going to love you like I do. It's all in tough love. You deserve this. It's your fault. And it was just a constant thing. And it finally got to the point where she told me that I needed to completely break it off with him. So, I did. And... Obviously, it took a really big toll on my life. It took a really big toll on my health. I actually lost a lot of weight. So when I moved to the new high school, I was, I'm going to say I was 165, give or take. When I had went to the, um, I when I had stopped, after I had broke it off with him, and like, and t reminder, we had been together for, four five six seven years like we'd been together forever so like i broke it off with him took a huge toll i had lost 20 pounds from that breakup up until the point of me like meeting my boyfriend like i had lost 20 whole pounds and it didn't take that long like i had lost it was just like Wow, one week I was 165, the next week I was like 155. Like it was like an instant kind of thing. And that's because I'd stopped eating, I'd stopped caring. I, at this point, I just wanted to let go. And then I met the next guy, okay? And need I remind you, I have a tendency to pick psychos. And he's, he wasn't really a psycho, he was just very, he was not. Personally, he was not what I wanted. Like, he, I did, but I didn't. It was more like a, wow, um, I feel comfortable with you for right now, and you don't make me feel like I'm a horrible person. So let's just... And so that was a huge mistake of mine on my part. I really wish I hadn't done that. So then there was him, and then I broke it off with him again. I broke it off with him. I completely blocked everyone in my like that I had had any kind of bad connections with like toxic friends toxic ex-boyfriends I broke I blocked everyone and I dropped from 145 to 135 like it was just like the when it comes to me going through really tough times I lose and lose and lose a lot of weight but you can tell, like, I can tell when I'm on a better track when I start to gain that weight back. Like, and that's not to say 
it, it was other things involved like hormones and my eating habits when I was in high school I was a I was way active I ate I didn't eat as like I ate right for the most part or I didn't eat at all like it was just like a it was just like a weird you know that weird high school like you're just really weird so then like I'm going through these psychotic breaks and I'm I'm like fighting myself and fighting everyone else and I'm like fighting like just constant I don't want to do this I don't want to live anymore I don't want to do this like I was done and so at this point I didn't want to worry my mother with it so I ended up staying with my best friend a lot of the time like I stayed at her house like every weekend I was at her house almost every break like we stayed together snow days like she stayed at my house we were always together like that was our thing I mean we were like each other's rocks along with our boyfriend but like we were each other's rocks we were there when one needed to cry we were there when one needed to fight like that was our thing and I can still call my two best friends and if I absolutely need to cry then I they're there so then at this point this is about the end of November start of December I met this guy yeah I met this guy obviously we know what guy I'm talking about because here we are almost two years and at this point you know I'm like do I really want to jump into this so um I'm like, do I really want to jump into this? And I'm really doubting it. And need I remind you, I never dated a white boy before. At least I don't think I have. No, well, I dated one in like fourth grade. But do they really count though? I don't think elementary relations count. But I never dated a white guy. I never intended to date a white guy. I didn't want to be that one black person that dated the white guy. Like, it just, ugh. I was just struggling. And again, I was battling myself. I was like, don't do it. It's wrong. You know it's wrong. And it's like all this stuff. And it's not to say that interracial couples shouldn't date. In fact, I like him more than I liked anybody else ever. So I'm like, he like put some magical spell on me. He's like, spookity, spookity, magic. So I met him and we hit it off kind of. We really didn't hit it off until like we had a snowy practice and we watched Olaf. Remember, he and him watched Olaf and I stole his coffee cup. Which is, I don't know. Someone took it out of my house and now I can't. Now I'm really upset. Anyways, so I hit it off with him and we started talking a little more. We started, then we started dating. And at that point, that was when I was like, Maybe I can do this. Maybe I should try it. I don't know. It was like a really weird mix of emotions. Like I really liked what I was doing. But I was really scared of the judgment that would come with it. So we started dating more. It was just really cute. We were being really cute. And then like we were okay. And then we started fighting. Like this is like the. Our honeymoon phase lasted maybe three months. December, January, February, and then like we started fighting. And at this point, we fought and we fought and we fought and we fought and we fought, and it just goes on. And I'm was back at that point where I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this. Just let me just go ahead and end it all right here, right now. Like, not our relationship, my life. I meant my life, not my relationship. I was, and, and a lot of people think I meant my relationship. No, I meant I wanted to end my life right there. Like, I was sick of the fighting. I was sick of the crime, like, all the issues I was going through. My ex-boyfriend had found a way to harass me again. It was just a, I was at a emotional break. And I sat in my best friend's room. It was me and her home at her house by ourselves. And I sat in her room. I cried and I had box braids in too I had just taken my box braids out I remember the night so 
I take my box sprays out. I went to wash my hair. My hair got all tangled. That was like the, 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 that was the breaking point. That was the breaking point. I was done. I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried. And that same day me and him had ended up in a fight again. But I cried and I cried. My hair was, my hair was falling apart. My relationship was falling apart. My ex was threatening to show people things that shouldn't have been shown. My other friends are like basically stabbing me in the back like one they're acting one way to my face and then next like they're acting a totally different way I didn't really get along with anybody I was being called a slut and a whore in the hallways of the high school I was just going through a point where I was done and I broke And I sat there on my best friend's bed. And I cried. And I cried. And I cried. And I don't think I had cried like that ever before. Like. <sighs> I'm not crying. And I cried. And that was just a moment. And I stopped crying and everything just seemed to. <sighs> and that night, my boyfriend picked me up from my best friend's house. And we went and sat in a parking lot for a little while. And we talked. And we talked. And we just talked about a little bit of everything. We talked about problems that happened. We talked about how things, how life was. We talked about, like, the stress I was under. We talked about the stress he was under. And we talked. And I think at those two moments where just crying with my best friend, because she was going through some struggles too. But crying with my best friend and talking with my boyfriend, those two moments... It just seemed like everything just flatlined. Like all my problems died in that moment. In those moments. Like it just, I don't know, like at first everything was going beep, 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 and then went beep, 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 and then I was like, huh. So then I got home and I went to bed. I woke up the next morning. I had my mom detangle my entire head because I yanked out so much of my hair and that's part of the reason why I cut my hair anyways is because I yanked out so much of it from just trying to pull at it and take out the knots and just I was just oh my gosh it was rough and everything circled and it all came to this moment here here I am now a year later a year and over a year later actually and I just I feel like I'm back at that point again where everything is just really not like I it feels like um my entire life is going to explode again and <sighs> honestly talking about it I feel like and I'm not sure how many people are like this but I can't talk about my problems till everything explodes like I have to explode and just get it all off my chest at one time and then talk about it and my counselor I had before she said that's a terrible idea I really do miss going to my counselor. And that's crazy to say. I'm not psychotic. I just really miss going to my counselor. Um, like, people say that's crazy for me to say. And it probably is. And, again, I'm not like other people. Like, I have to explode before anything, like, circles. Like, it just, it's a never-ending circle of how my life goes. Like, I'll go and I'll go and I'll go and I'll let it all build up. Then I'll explode 
I like this like so it's like a clock so from like 12 to 9 is like building everything up explode at 10 talk at 11 and then start it all over again and it's probably very destructive it's probably the most destructive behavior I've ever had but all of this happened in a matter of two years and we're back at that point again where I could explode but I'm really like I really don't want to that's probably why I'm like talking to the camera now like I don't want to explode and in fact I feel like there are other ways to handle it so recently obviously you guys watched my weight plan video I have been exercising and working out and working out and it really helps but it doesn't help all the way I read my books it helps I just I tend to stay with myself I listen to my sad songs or my angry songs and I try to just let my let the music express itself and that's another thing I learned like when I was in like elementary school my dad he let me play violin and I fell in love with the instrument and the reason I fell in love and I really wish I could hold my violin again it was oh my gosh my favorite instrument my trombone was second but my violin that was my baby so I the reason I fell in love with playing the violin is because and just fell in love with music in general that's like been an entire life thing I've always loved music is because it's so easy to express yourself without coming out insane and that's what I liked about it so we had these different kind of songs so we played Allegro, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star there was another one I really hated playing there was Andantino just all these Beethoven volume three this and that and perpetual motion and just all these songs and each song had a different emotion and feeling to it and I remember like when I'd hear twinkle twinkle little star it was like a soothing kind of melody so it was like a do 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 and it was like very soothing so that was like always my first go-to song when I was upset because it was very soothing or if I was really really upset we'd play this song called Andantino and I would play it and the whole beat of this song is like very structured and I loved it and it was just that's the whole reason I fell in love with music and then I got played stuck in band because the school I'd moved to didn't have an orchestra so got stuck in band and we played very soothing songs like we played some really cool songs but then we got to like our really angry sounding songs that had very and it just ooh, it just felt really good to just hammer out those notes right and I just all my problems melted away and that's probably the reason why music is my best friend um, I'm not even sure where this video is going anymore so yeah we're just gonna continue talking <sighs> I, don't know, I just really needed to get things off my chest. I'm probably never going to post this video, but, you know, it just feels good. I feel like I can talk to my camera even if I don't post it, and it just makes my life a whole lot easier. So I think I'm going to get a regular camera, and then maybe start like a video diary or something, so I'm not having to write everything out, but, yeah. Oof, I'm just at a point where I'm like, can I continue? Or do I explode? And everybody's like, don't explode, just talk about it. But it seems like when you're talking about your problems, no one wants to listen. Or they get offended. But then when you explode, there's an absolute problem. And, no, and so everyone's like, why do you wait until you explode? Because I've been sending you these signs and these warnings and just giving you the words and hoping you were smart enough to put them together. But instead, you were so dumb you didn't listen and I exploded, you know. So I'm 
sometimes I wish I wasn't like that. And I've tried to change it. I really have. But, you know. It's a struggle. I really do try. And I wish people understood that. Like, they're always like, you're wrong for saying so and so. And you know people are going to get offended. I'm like, you think I want to be offensive? In fact, my goal in life is to be the least offensive person people encounter. And that's why a lot of my friends like me, because I'm not offensive. Yes, I do say the truth. And sometimes it does sound like I'm being brutally honest, but brutal honesty is not, as I'm not always doing it to hurt. It's just how it comes out. Everybody thinks I'm doing it on purpose to hurt feelings, and I'm really not. I'm just, at some point, you gotta tell people not what they want to hear, but what they need to hear. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna end that here probably not going to get very many likes and views on this but no one cares it's just for me to vent and rant you know so again i hope you guys have a good day i'll see you guys at some point hopefully 2020 will be a better year i don't tip i don't like odd numbers so it should be a pretty good year. It's an even number all the way, all the entire year. 2020, like. Yeah. So, I'll see you guys in my next video. Hopefully, this doesn't hurt anybody in the fields. If you guys can relate, then say something. If you can't, then don't say anything. I don't care at all. So, yeah, without further ado, bye.